Emily and the Special Coaches. It was summer on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited. Gordon had set a new record for pulling the express. Emily was on her way to pick up two very special coaches. They had been newly painted to celebrate Gordon's record. The fat controller was going to present them to Gordon. Emily had stopped to take on water. Diesel pulled up alongside her. You look very pleased with yourself, oiled Diesel. Emily told him all about Gordon's record and collecting the special coaches. Gordon's not the only one who's special, Diesel oiled proudly. Well, there's nothing special about smelly old Diesels, pouted Emily. I haven't time to listen to you. I have to collect more coal. And Emily steamed off. This made Diesel very cross, and he rattled away. Later, Emily arrived at the yards. But Gordon's special coaches weren't there. Diesel has already collected them, puffed Thomas. He said it was his job. But that was my job, huffed Emily. I'll have to find them. I mustn't be late for the presentation. Emily puffed quickly across the island. She was looking for Diesel and the special coaches. Suddenly, Emily saw Diesel waiting at a signal. He was coupled up to Gordon's special coaches. Why have you taken Gordon's coaches? She snapped sharply. Because, Diesel began. I haven't got time to listen to you, huffed Emily. Give me those coaches. Not if you won't listen, groaned Diesel, and he sped away. Emily chased after Diesel. It was getting later and later, and Emily was worried. But as usual, Diesel was being devious. He knew all the tricks and many different tracks. Emily couldn't catch him anywhere, and he made her look silly. Emily steamed into Maithwaite Station. The fat controller was there. Where are Gordon's coaches? He asked her. Diesel took them, sir, huffed Emily. We must find him at once, boomed the fat controller. And he climbed aboard Emily. Diesel had hidden the coaches in a siding, but he wasn't feeling well. He started to slow down. Up ahead, Diesel saw Emily with the fat controller. Now I'm in trouble, he moaned. Diesel, said the fat controller sternly, where are Gordon's special coaches? They're in a siding, sir, said Diesel quietly. Shake Emily there at once, ordered the fat controller crossly. Yes, sir, oiled Diesel. Diesel showed Emily the trucks in the siding. Emily could see black smoke coming from Diesel's engine. What's wrong with your engine? asked Emily. My engine's old, spluttered Diesel. All that rushing round has worn it out. Then you shouldn't have taken the coaches, huffed Emily. You should have listened to me, snapped Diesel. Why should I listen to a smelly old Diesel? Because Gordon's not the only one who's set a record, oiled Diesel quietly. I've set one too. Emily was surprised. Have you? She wished. And this time she listened. I've shunted more trucks in one day than any other Diesel. Diesel oiled, and he spluttered sadly away. Oh, 
dear, said Emily sadly. Diesel is just as special as Gordon. Emily raced to Knapford with Gordon's special coaches. Now she wanted Diesel to feel special too. As she puffed into Knapford Station, Emily had an idea. She told the Fat Controller all about Diesel's record and about her idea to make Diesel feel special. The Fat Controller listened carefully. That's a very good idea, Emily, he said. Tell Diesel to come here this afternoon. Emily found Diesel. She told him he had to go to Knapford. Then Emily raced off to collect Diesel's surprise. Later, at Knapford Station, the Fat Controller presented Gordon with his special coaches. Don't my coaches look splendid? puffed Gordon proudly. Everyone agreed. Just then, Emily puffed into the station. And this new diesel motor is for you, Diesel, chuffed Emily. Diesel was surprised. I'm sorry I didn't listen, said Emily. Now I know that diesels and steamies are both special. Everyone cheered for Gordon and Diesel. Toby's afternoon off. The engines of Sodor are very friendly. And Nom is more friendly than Toby. Toby is a happy, smiling steam tram with lots of friends. There's Mavis at the quarry. Salty at the docks. And Thomas. They're all Toby's friends. One day, Toby had finished all his jobs early. He was going to spend the afternoon at the farm. Toby loved visiting the animals. As he was about to leave, the Fat Controller arrived. Toby, he said, I have three important specials. As you have finished early, you will have time to do all of them. Yes, sir, puffed Toby. But Toby was worried. He liked being useful, but three jobs would take him the rest of the day. Now he would have no time to go to the farm. Toby puffed off. He felt sad. But then... He had an idea. Perhaps he could get everything done in time. All I need is some help with just one of my jobs. I'll ask one of my friends. Toby's first job was to shun some trucks at the yards. As he arrived, he saw Mavis. Mavis will help me, he thought. Sorry, Toby, no time to talk, Mavis puffed and she steamed past him. Toby was upset. He had been sure Mavis would help him. I'll just have to shunt the trucks on my own, he puffed sadly. Next, Toby had to collect some empty trucks from the depot. As he arrived, Thomas was leaving. Thomas, called Toby. Wait, will you help me take some trucks? Asked Toby. Sorry, Toby, chuffed Thomas. I'm in a hurry. I'll help you later. And Thomas raced away. Toby was surprised. Mavis and Thomas had both rushed off very quickly. Now he would have to take the trucks to the coaling plant himself. It was getting late. 
Toby was worried he wouldn't get to the farm and he wouldn't get to see the animals. Once Toby had delivered the trucks, he rushed to his last job at Brendam Docks. Perhaps my friend Salty will help me. But as Toby arrived, Salty was rushing towards him. Salty, cried Toby, stop, please. I have to help Cranky unload lots of cargo, puffed Toby. But I'm running out of time. Will you help me? Ah, sorry, Toby, said Salty. But I have an important delivery. This piston rod is too important to wait, matey. Toby felt miserable. He knew deliveries were important, but he thought helping a friend was important too. Neither Mavis, Thomas, nor Salty had helped Toby. And I thought they were my friends, puffed Toby sadly. He would have to move all that cargo on his own. Now he'd never get to the farm. Toby pulled up alongside Cranky. Why are you waiting for? Crank Cranky. I'm here to pick up the cargo, said Toby sadly. The ship's been caught in rough seas, Cranky snapped. The cargo won't be here till morning. Toby was delighted. Now he'd have time to get to the farm, so he raced off. Then Toby saw Henry in a siding. Where are you going in such a hurry? wheezed Henry sadly. Toby told him all about wanting to go to the farm and all about Mavis, Thomas and Salty. I thought friends helped each other, Toby wished, but they were all too busy to help me. That's because they've all been helping me, puffed Henry. Toby was surprised. I broke down, said Henry. So Mavis brought my special coal. Thomas took my passengers and Salty brought me a new piston rod. Toby knew he had made a mistake. Mavis, Thomas and Salty had been helping a friend after all. They were all helping you, gasped Toby. Toby felt very silly. Is there anything I can do to help you, Henry? he asked. Henry was surprised. But then you won't get to the farm to see the animals, said Henry. It doesn't matter, said Toby. Helping a friend is much more important. What can I do? Henry asked Toby to take his carriages to Knapford Station. Henry's carriages were very, very heavy. I don't know if I will be able to move them, said Toby, but I'm going to try. Toby coupled up to the carriages. He heaved and hauled and puffed and pulled. At last, Henry's carriages began to move. Henry was very pleased. Thank you, Toby, he called as Toby puffed away. Sorry about your afternoon off. But Toby didn't mind. He was helping his friend, and that was better than an afternoon off any day. Percy and the Fun Fair. It was a beautiful morning on the island of Sodor. All the engines were very excited. It was the day of the Fat Controller's Fun Fair. Children would be coming from far and wide. There was to be a special visit from the Chinese dragon. Percy was delighted. He thought the Chinese dragon was the most exciting thing of all. The fat controller arrived at Tidmouth. He had come to give the engines their jobs. Edward was to pull the merry-go-round, Henry the roller coaster, Gordon the fairground folk, Toby the bumper cars. 
James and Emily were to pull the Ferris wheel and Chomish, boomed the fat controller, you are to collect the fireworks and a Chinese dragon. What's my job, sir? asked Percy, hopefully. You are to collect coal from the coaling plant. You must fill all the hoppers at the stations, ordered the fat controller. A railway can't run without coal, he added. This is a very important job. The fat controller left and all the engines were excited. All except Percy. Coal, he sighed. And as he watched his friends leave for their exciting jobs, Percy felt very left out. Percy chuffed sadly over to the coal plant. This didn't feel like an important job at all. When Percy arrived, he could see a long line of trucks. I wish I was pulling something exciting grumbled Percy. Not bought an old coal trucks. Percy buffered up and pulled out of the depot. Percy stopped at a signal by a school. Toby puffed past pulling flatbeds full of bumper cars. The children in the playground clapped and cheered. Then Edward chuffed by with the merry-go-round. The children cheered even louder. Percy thought that Toby and Edward were having a wonderful time. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Maybe Toby and Edward need some help. Helping friends is much more important than delivering coal, he wished. So Percy didn't deliver the coal. He left his trucks and he steamed after his friends as quickly as he could. Toby and Edward stopped at a red signal. Percy puffed up alongside. Do you need any help? He tooted, hopefully. No, thank you, Percy, said Toby. We can do it, chuffed Edward. Percy was disappointed. Further up the line, Percy saw Emily and James. They were taking the Ferris wheel. That looks like fun, tooted Percy. I'm sure they'll need some help. Percy caught up with James and Emily. This is going to be the biggest wheel ever, chirruped Emily. Emily and James were having a splendid time. But James and Emily didn't need help either. Percy was upset. Then Percy saw Gordon waiting at a junction. Gordon was pulling the fairground folk, but he didn't need any help either. Percy saw Henry crossing the bridge. Henry was happily pulling the roller coaster. Finally, Percy saw Thomas waiting at a signal. He was carrying the fireworks and the Chinese dragon. That looks like the most fun of all, gasped Percy. But even Thomas didn't need any help. Percy was more disappointed than ever. Then there was trouble. Percy had spent so much time trying to help that he hadn't delivered any coal. Percy saw James. He looked very sad. There's no coal at the stations, he wished. We've all run out of coal. Boss my boiler, cried Percy. If the engines don't get some coal, the funfair won't open. All the children will be sad and it's all my fault. Percy knew what he had to do. He had to pick up his trucks and deliver the coal as quickly as he could. Percy wished all over the island delivering coal to his friends. Soon, everyone's boiler was bubbling and their pistons were pounding. The engines were back on track.
The fun fur was ready just in time. Percy finished his last delivery of coal and arrived at the fun fur as the fireworks began. The rocket soared. The band played and the Chinese dragon danced. <laughs> All the children were delighted. The fat controller was right, tooted Percy. Delivering the coal is a very important job. A smooth ride. Sir Handel is one of the oldest engines on the island of Sodor. He's a dark blue colour and has a small number three painted on his side. Sir Handel is also known as one of the smoothest engines on the Thin Controller's Railway. Sir Handel had been working in the stone quarry all summer. The Thin Controller, Mr Percival, was happy to see him back. I've got a special for you, Mr Percival told Sir Handel. I want you to collect some trucks of apples. You must pull them very carefully or the apples will bruise. Yes, sir, whooshed Sir Handel, and off he chuffed. At the orchard, Sir Handel was coupled to the trucks. He pulled them away very carefully. He pulled them around the lake, across the stone bridge, and he started to puff up a hill. Then there was trouble. His pistons popped, his traction rods rattled, and his boiler bubbled and bounced. Sir Handel couldn't go on. Peter Sam puffed up behind him. He was worried. Why have you stopped, Sir Handel? He whistled. I have a problem, wished Sir Handel sadly. It happens when I go up hills. I start to rattle and rock, and then I have to stop. Peter Sam felt sorry for his friend. Could you help me up the hill? Puffed Sir Handel. Of course I can. Peter Sam, and he pushed Sir Handel and the trucks of apples all the way up the hill. When Sir Handel arrived at the station, the Thin Controller was very pleased. There's not one bruise on those apples, said the Thin Controller. What a smooth engine you are. Sir Handel was happy that the Thin Controller was pleased, so he didn't tell the Thin Controller about his problem. Now I have another special for you, said the Thin Controller. I want you to pick up sheep from the farm. Yes, sir, puffed Sir Handel, but he was worried. When Sir Handel arrived at the farm, the farmer was waiting. Be careful said the farmer. Sheep need a smooth ride. Yes, sir, chuffed Sir Handel, and he puffed away. But soon Sir Handel came to another hill. His pistons popped, his traction rods rattled, and his boiler bubbled and bounced. Sir Handel couldn't go on. This time, Duncan puffed up behind him. Sir Handel told him all about his problem. Duncan was happy to help. With Duncan's help, Sir Handel delivered the sheep safely to their new field. When Sir Handel arrived at the transfer yards, the Thin Controller and Mrs Percival were waiting. The Thin Controller was very pleased with Sir Handel's work. 
Now he had a surprise special for him. Today is my wife's birthday, said the thin controller. You are to take us to the top of Caldy Fell for a picnic. Yes, sir, puffed Sir Handel. But he knew that the track to Caldy Fell was very steep. Sir Handel was more worried than ever. Sir Handel puffed towards Caldy Fell. The track was even steeper than he remembered. I can do it, I can do it, to the top, to the top, he chuffed. Then there was trouble. His pistons popped and his traction rods rattled. Inside the carriage, the picnic hamper burst open and the thin controller and Mrs Percival were juddered and shuddered. Sir Handel shuddered to a stop. The thin controller was worried for his engine. You're a fine engine, Sir Handel, but you're no longer a smooth engine, he said. I'll have to send you back to the stone quarry. That's the place for bumpy engines. Please, sir, I can be a smooth engine. I only shudder and shake when I go up hills, Sir Handel wished. The thin controller listened. I see, he said. Please don't send me back to the stone quarry. The thin controller made a telephone call. He looked very serious. Later, Sir Handel was held back to the transfer yards by Mighty Mac. Sir Handel was very worried. He was sure that the thin controller was going to send him back to the quarry. Sir Handel arrived at the transfer yards. He saw Thomas. Hello, Sir Handel, tooted Thomas. Sir Handel? I've asked a special engineer to come and fix you, smiled the thin controller. You're a special engine and you need special attention. Sir Handel smiled from buffer to buffer. He had never felt happier. Sir Handel was soon fixed and now he could chuff cheerfully up Caldy Fell. The children in his carriages whooped and cheered. Sir Handel gave the smoothest ride of all.